Hey guys, I've got a bit of an update on the video from last time regarding the Chromium browser. The issue was that it might not necessarily have been as free and open as we initially thought when it was discovered that it was downloading a bit of proprietary software in the background which activated the OK Google functionality, the voice activated search function that you see uh, very commonly on the Google Chrome browser, the proprietary version of it, and on Android phones as well. It turns out that they're going to no longer be doing that as of, I believe, the next version of Chromium. So, good news! Good news! Um, it brought, I was reading a couple of articles about it, actually, and apparently the OK Google functionality, um, although it effectively kind of keeps your microphone on all the time, which, again, is somewhat suspect and one of the reasons why I'm personally not comfortable with it, is that, of course, it's a proprietary code, so what they tell us we have to eff effectively take on faith um, but apparently the OK Google hot words I think they call it to you know activate the Google stuff um, is processed on the uh, client end on the user end which I guess you kind of expect but um, again um, I do have to raise the question why do we need such a thing? I mean, it seems to be something of an obvious question to maybe your average Linux user who um, often questions how you know we use our software and we often don't uh, we don't as much buy into the bells and whistles of software at least without heavily questioning what's going on behind the scenes. I think that's almost one of the defining factors of what makes uh, a Linux user is that we at least question our software and, and demand a degree of autonomy over it, which is why there was so much outrage over it. And I think it was justified outrage, and it was certainly useful outrage, because it was in response to this backlash that we that we saw Google backpedal on it. So uh, it's good news all around. And, um, and uh, you know, I was thinking about the idea of why we need this, this voice activation, especially on desktop machines. The keyboard and mouse, as far as I'm aware, and, you know, I've grown up with a keyboard and mouse, as have most of us, um, I find that to be the, the, the epitome of how you use a tool. Like, it's, it's perfect. There, there is very little you can do to the keyboard and mouse that would actually improve your control over a machine. Uh, that goes, as far as I'm concerned, not only for things like typing and uh, moving around a desktop interface, but with games as well. You put, you put a gamepad in my hand and I, I, I get by, but it makes a game ten times more difficult when, when I can use the keyboard and mouse as an option. Um, and also when you're looking at, um, uh, you know, how, how would a voice in any way be easier, using your voice in any way be easier to just move around your desktop to search or, or anything like that? I can in theory possibly understand it for a phone um, because uh, there is always that slight problem of, or there is always that problem of how you're going to get text onto the, um, onto the device. To be honest, the Swish keyboard that Android has been going with now for quite some time, um, it works. I have very little problem with it. You understand that you obviously you can't type and get stuff done as efficiently as you can on a desktop machine, but I think this, the Swish keyboards that they're working on now is is more than enough. And the touchscreen, of course, is a good substitute for the mouse. And I feel that this voice activation, it, again, it feels like a gimmick. It feels a little bit uh, parallel to sort of VR. And VR took a long time to get right with the Oculus Rift and the Steam headset and all that kind of stuff. And the reason it took so long to get right is because people didn't really understand how immersion worked and how VR worked, in the sense that um, the immersion, uh, a lot of people tried to put you in things like, um, you know, on treadmill devices and things like that to simulate being in um, an artificial environment. And that never took off beyond a, a gimmick. And part of that was obviously the price sort of went up and up and up when you started taking it beyond the virtual reality headset. Um, but also it actually broke immersion. And it wasn't until um, people started putting on things like the Oculus Rift and a gamepad in their hand um, or even a keyboard and mouse, where people actually found more, became more immersed because there was less, um, there, there were less things getting in the way between you and the game. You had a control device that you felt very natural using, whereas anything other than your keyboard and mouse or anything other than your gamepad would then put like another step in between you and the environment that you were trying to immerse yourself in. Um, and that being said, I think Google, um, OK Google, is almost of that similar vein in the sense that it's attempting to bring you more into um, a, a natural environment whereas it might 
sort of on the surface feel more natural to be speaking with a computer than to actually be typing stuff in, but um, but I think that is the same myth that they had with, with VR when they tried to start um, simulating not only the visuals but the, uh, you know, the physical environment as well, um, in the sense that we don't talk to our computers because they are not people. Um, and I know that one of the things that it might concern me in regards to it being a gimmick is that a lot of people want a Jarvis from Iron Man. They want a, um, a science fiction machine in, in a way. And it that in a way is, is a bit concerning because it's, it's buying into a gimmick for the sake of it being a gimmick. And when you start going down that road, you start becoming a bit of a chump when it comes to people trying to sell you stuff or people trying to get you on some kind of bandwagon or, or people trying to flog a craze to you, is that you become somewhat more of a soft target um, for these kind of things, I feel. Maybe it's just me, but you kind of maybe lose that edge of skepticism that so many Linux and, and BSD users have where, you know, we, we question how we use our, almost all the technology in our lives and what's on it and how it's put together and where it comes from and, um, and I think every time we buy into a gimmick um, we lose that a little bit. Um, if the gimmick in the question actually, because sometimes things like VR headsets, you know, now they're sort of taking off because they've just been refined to a point where they can actually be useful and an improvement on what currently exists. But that took decades. That really took decades. We've had we've had VR for decades now, and it was it was only it was only sort of until recently, after a lot of trial and error. Uh, did we actually find that we can make VR an improvement on current gaming experiences? And again, I'm actually taking other people's word on that, people who have used it and, and whose opinions I've trust. I've never actually put on a VR headset in my life. Um, and again, I, I'm still at that sort of sceptical stage where I don't see it past a gimmick. Same thing with OK Google, even when it was when I had an Android device, I never really used it. And um, and I think that um, we, you know, as a, as a open source community, I guess, um, you know, we made the right call, and I think that now them taking it out is is a step forward, and it's also a step forward in the fact that they actually listened. It's it was so often the the case that you don't the corporations just push their agenda regardless, and whereas they can do that maybe with Windows users, particularly people uh, who who sort of don't care about the ramifications of software as long as it's um, you know gratis, uh, fiscally free. Um, I think you can't really pull the wool over Linux users eyes that easily. Uh, maybe I'm making some pretty broad generalizations, particularly on Windows users, because Windows users covers covers the whole spectrum, whereas Linux users sort of has a, has a significantly more narrow one. Anyway, apologies for the rambling, but please let me know your thoughts on anything that I've said today down in the comments section below. Um, are there any gimmicks that most people would consider gimmicks that you actually find significantly useful? Um, in, I guess, in my case, the closest is trackable mice. I really love trackable. I find that when I'm playing games and, and uh, interacting with desktops, it, I just find it significantly more efficient. I don't know whether or not you call them a gimmick or maybe just like a niche hipster product, but um, yeah, when I play games, I'm significantly more accurate. Um, I like the fact that I've got two monitors, dual monitors, side by side, so having a trackable means that I can move the mouse from one monitor to the other just really easily without having to worry about without having to worry about going off the edge of the mouse pad or anything like that. Anyway guys, your thoughts would as always be appreciated. Thanks very much for watching and until next time I've been Chris Ware and you've been awesome. Take care now.